Right, just recurving the rig. No good steaming as far as I'm concerned. You need to rub it. And that, that puts spring into the hook link as you warm it up with friction. This is the next part, see that, look. See where I'm just resting halfway along the hook link? To create more of a curve nearer the hook. Right, I've got to go, I've got one on. As quick as that. <laughs> Same rod where I've had two bites before. It's a lot of bloody alien. You hear that single bleat while I'm showing you the curve? <laughs> If you imagine, if I'd have sat here all winter, trying to write like I did last winter, I just can't. It's my priority has got to be getting that book done. And this is my first trip back, without doing the tuition on here. I'm supposed to be writing at least a thousand words today. Oh well. Maybe the carp gods want me to have a break. Right, that fish is a real small one, and I'm going to unhook him in the net and let him free. Right, let's get this rod back out, because I haven't, I've only got two rods left out now. There you go, look. Notice the finger resting against halfway down the hook link to add it extra, a little bit extra. A curve near the hook, that's what I'm looking for, that there. An aggressive curve like that. There you go. Right, I'm going to attach the rig um, hook bait now. I told you one topped over that rod, that's three bites off that zone. I just use a sliding knot, cross it just like your shoelaces, do one loop and go round it and through whatever amount of times you want. I would say at least four. Right. 
So when I go back down to Charmwood next week, the confidence I'm going to have, because I know everything's right, and I know everything's right anyway, don't care who you are, you get a few bites, but yeah, it stops you questioning what you're doing, because you know everything's right. A loop, put it down really tight. I don't waste all this cutting stuff, just burn it off. Burn it down, when it's down to the knot, just push it on, happy days. Before I PVA it up, so it keeps the curve on the cast. Another little trick of mine. Some PVA tape, you can use tape or string, whatever, whatever you want. Tight round the hook. Yes, it is very fiddly. Three times. You need a splicing needle. Right. Swivel. I push it through, which is on the ring swivel, push it through, connect the PVA to the splice needle, shut the gate, pull it through, and you can see that it starts to come up, so it's keeping that curve for you. Right, the next part, it can be a bit tricky, but you just form a loop, lay it over like so, form a loop, put that underneath and back round. So, pull it through the loop, keep hold of it and then just let that tighten down, pull it down to the hook. Cut it off, bite it off, up to you. And that is the Boise. That's what you're looking for. And then when it hits down bottom, it keeps its curve, then that melts and away you go. All I've got to do now is just put a bit of nose oil here, and that's to stop it from rusting, etc. Right, time to get that rig back out. See the big oak in the right hand corner, I've got to get it basically you know, within 10 foot of that bank. It's quite a big deep hole over there and it's one of the spots they love to lay in. Right. One just jumped out there as well. Well out today. Sink the line back.
about the centre line. It's got another rod right near it. Very carefully, just place some line out. This is Vision's, um, this is 15 pound rock bottom. Set the clutch, put it in a clip so I know it isn't tangled around anything on the reel. Put the line tight, set the bobbin slack here. Any movement that will start to bleep. Straight back out, get the other rod back out, and then I've got a bait up. Now it's time to uh, replace the two um, mesh hook baits. Let's put it in the tights, just the cheapest ladies' tights you can get hold of. I prefer, laugh out loud. Anyway, a slip knot. Pull that tight onto the bait and then slip it down tight. A pair of scissors. Just cut it off. Just blow the knot. And just blob it. Stop it from slipping. Just get it all nice and molten and then flatten it. That's it, done. Right. Also, keep on top of things. Done the hook bait, so replace the tied up chods. I don't want to be wasting time doing this on the bank in between bites. Right. It's a bit harder to do it like this, but at least I'm sort of showing you. I like to, I like to put the into my thigh. Right, the hook's dark. I like to just check along the hook point because I sharpen the whole hook point but not where my nail is there because that's, that's where you need the strength Why is it'll open up. So basically three quarters of that has been taken down now so the thickness of that point it's disappearing, which is good. The thinner, the better as far as I'm concerned, because then the hook is going to be much easier to slide in. Nearly there now, just a point to go. sharp. Right, as it shows in my other videos at times with this you need to know if the hook point's been burned but by um, touching it on your nail if it sticks that, as long as it don't slide down like that as long as it just rests on it look it's not sliding so that's perfect. Right I like to do three holes just like to feel Three. Now squeeze it. See, I only got two to bleed that time. So it's not quite there. That's how precise I am. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what, what rods you got, what reels you got. It's all about the sharpness of the hook. Three, look, two together and one. That's it. Well happy with that. Just touch it up a little bit more. Different finger. Look at that. Carp gets that in its kisser. It's had it. Super sharp, super thin, honed down. Have that. This stuff is the best 
chud material I've ever used. And I ain't saying it. I might get it for nothing, right? Yeah, but I don't give I don't give a shit if they give it to me or not. If it's the best, I buy it. Simple as. And they don't pay me to say things like that. All I'm doing is passing on my findings. Right. Through the through the eye. Leave two foot, two foot, two inch for the hair, which will form the D. You can wrap it. I like to go seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you pull it back through. So it's a knotless knot. So it's 25 pound mouth trap. Look at that, straight back through. And then you just pull it down. So, pull it down, that's it, lovely. Just check it. Right, as you can see there, that hair's going off to one side. Right, so just twist the knot, so the hair runs parallel with the shank of the hook. Right, so, perfect. Get your ring, three or four mil ring, put it on, push it back through the eye. There you go, sweet as a pea. Size 5 stiff rigger, you can use bigger but don't use smaller. Right, cut that off, leave about three mil to blob down. There you go. Right, control blob it down just before and then flatten it with your finger and then you know that isn't going to pull back through that eye. Right, pull it straight. Like so. Then put it up with the other ones. Then put it with the other ones. I use zig foam, don't use cork. Cork will blunt the hook. Cut it to the same size as the others. Then I keep it. One of them, like I've shown you before. And that's it. Lid on. Chodge ready to go. Happy days. So you're not losing any time fishing. So if you're on a few hours, or a day session, whatever, right, yeah, you don't want to be sitting when you've got a bite, or you've damaged the hook link, right, yeah, sitting there tying the rig up. I've got to go, I've got one on. all rods gone now, so that's four spots done. This is the last rod to go. There you go, Jim's getting all technical, showing you a few things. Not right in the book, but there you go. Coming up from the left, cut a line on a long line. Yeah, look, the top that there, look that green. Do you think I've been here, what, two, two and a half hours, and I've had four bites, five bites, four fish, ready.
Now you can see why I've got two landing nets about. Double hookups are the norm here. And I don't want to get caught short. What's it they say, chuds for nuds? I don't give a shit about anything like that. Obviously, I'm still trolling. <laughs> you see so many so-called superstars slagging this rig off. But while they're slagging it off, Uncle Jim's still trolling. Biggins, Littlings, Hard Lakes. Etc. Etc. Rod's gone, look, there you go. <laughs> now I'm panicking in a way. There you go, I couldn't have done that any better. One in, another one on. There you go, boys and girls. Couldn't have talked that up any better, could I? Oh, bloody alien again. I've had it on here and I've had four, four, all at once. <laughs> so you imagine then if I'd have sat here the last sort of, like I would normally do, seven, eight weeks. Right, yeah, I'd have caught absolutely loads, but I wouldn't have got the writing I wanted done. I'd have just been wasting time. No disrespect. I want to get this bloody book written right, yeah, so I can go fishing for proper ones, big ones, in the spring. I'd rather be doing book writing, catching the odd big one, than sitting here flipping trawling. This old reel sounding a bit bad. These old infinities have had some therapy over the years. You never know, doubt Diana might even send me a new one or two. I doubt it though. Big companies seem to sort of shy off from me. Who gives a shit, eh? I'll just buy it. Earn a dollar, buy it. It's mine then, isn't it?
gonna go down now. There you go, mid-January, two on at the same time basically. Lively old things these are today. Long range shot in the silt. And a white pop up. That's 15 or 16, this one.
long running chod again in the soft stuff. Happy days. Am I going to get any writing done today? Probably not. <laughs> and I've still got two magazine features to put together at the weekend. There you go. This is mental. Absolutely mental this is. Just setting up the camera just in case. As I plonked it down, turned it round just to zoom it in, bang. Only got one rod left out now. I'm soaked, a stink of carp. Uncle's back in the groove trolling. Sticky boats, get on it. Sticky white chocolate, pop pops, soaked in sticky boats, brickleberry. Rotten. It's about two kilo of vortex now.
Five. Are you? You start to light here, get light. Five and last one. Yeah, mate. We've got turning it. No, not now. I just did a minute ago. Ah, oh, you got him here. You got a new video yet then? Oh, joking, mate. Right. Oh, right. right, that was two on the bank at the same time. This one looks like it's been um oh. I'm not the way this one is about twenty pounds. This is on the right hand rod towards the big oak. White pop up, long running chod. Done about two kilo of vortex so far. One rod left out. Right, let me get this one back. <coughs> you got another one? No, that's it. All right, mate. I left that on top there, Jim. All right, mate. Yeah, cheers. You get any more? You want to pick the gift show, mate? Yeah, man.